Hey what's up guys this is Freddy Bonfire back with another amazing tutorial and this time I want to talk about the new rigid body simulation capabilities in Cinema 4D 2024 and finally the rigid bodies are part of the unified simulation system that means that they work perfectly together with ropes, soft bodies, cloth, balloons, all of the good stuff and that is just amazing okay. It simulates super fast and clean. I didn't have exploding rigid bodies and it's just smooth and fast. What else can I say? Maybe Maybe you want to have some numbers here so let me tell you that for a simulation time of 360 frames I simulated over 50,000 rigid bodies the simulation time was under 13 minutes and the disk space was 2.1 gigabytes I simulated with a Ryzen 9 5900X 12 core CPU and two 3090 Nvidia cards okay so these numbers could be helpful if you want to compare it with your system but overall I just want to say it once again it's powerful, it's fast and it is amazing. And Maxon didn't pay me for that. And maybe you want to see some frames rendered with redshift. So just look at how beautiful these rigid bodies are. And as always, I will dive deeper into the project and also the whole topic on my Patreon 3D Bonfire. So if you want to learn more of the good stuff, then check out my Patreon. But other than that, let's also here on YouTube just build a powerful simulation here. Let's just play with the rigid bodies a bit and have a good time together. Okay, so let's fire up Cinema 4D and have some fun. Quite a lot is going on here already, so you can see some forces with some fields to just have different forces working in different areas for example here in these ones you can see that here is like a cylindrical field here with a rotation force which will just rotate your particles around for example so quite a lot of stuff is going on here but we will not build the whole setup it will just take too long I just wanted to show you my final scene here you can see that this one is cached and I can scrub through the timeline here as mentioned for these 360 frames the caching time was 13 minutes and it's not only this cloner set up here but I have more of these ones okay so for example these three coming from this side and then I have another package of three cloner setups from the other side okay now they will just slide into the middle now the speed of your scrubbing performance here is a bit slower just because I have a lot of stuff going on here but you can see they dive into these holes here and now they will interact with the rotation force with the different colliders for example this pusher here or these pushers which are basically just cylinders but I just want to call them pushers okay let's deactivate some of these ones because when I only have like two cached systems active then the performance here is just faster like in a minute we want to go into a new scene and build something simple from scratch but I just hope that this will also give you some ideas here what you can do for example with this rotation force and as I said this is just a rotation force with a cylindrical field restricted to in this area to this area and this area and then for example you can rotate these particles like left around and this one right around and then you get beautiful interactions here yeah and uh, then you have something crazy cool for your Instagram for example okay but now let's dive into a new scene and build something from scratch all right a nice and fresh new scene so probably we want to work with some spheres let's just say they will be something like 10 in the radius okay this is good I just want to see this one as a size comparison here and now I want to build my stage my architecture for the simulation let's just make this one bigger I want to see it in comparison and this one it's distracting me okay so I get rid of the work plane I don't need it I also don't need the world axis I don't need the horizon I don't need anything here just a gray void this is how I feel good okay so now we have like this cube here let's Let's just give it some intersections for example or seems to be a good value here let's press C to make this one editable and then we could select these two move this one up something like this one now I go to the optic mode press T I want to stretch this one out I think it should be bigger something like this for example okay this is fine let's see it once again in comparison to our sphere okay this is good now we could bool like a shape out of this one so for example 
one we could select like a sphere here let's do it like this one okay let's make this one more round let's put it to 300 segments something like this one let's see okay we don't want this one to penetrate through it let's move it up a little bit and then probably we can just do some bool operation here let's bool away the sphere from the cube okay let's just see this one without lines press na to get rid of them okay something like this one i want to move the sphere up a little bit maybe like this one okay so <laughs> yeah the shape can be more complex but for now we want to keep this one simple let's just do it like this one and maybe we could make it just a bit more interesting so for example we could have like this element going up and down to push the spheres up and down so that could be funny just want to give it more segments here and b to see the lines so i really want to have this one smooth and a to get rid of them and then i think i just want to hold alt and put the bool into another bool and now I want to bool away the cylinder from our bool shape. Let's do it like this. Okay, you can move this one down. You can even put a hole into it. This is totally fine. Now I want to duplicate the cylinder. Let's put it out of the hierarchy and let's put this one to 66, for example. So there is like a tiny margin between them just to make this one more believable. So this one can really fit into the hole and move up and down. Let's just search for a nice position in the beginning, for example, like this one. And now you can go over to animation text, vibration. Let's just move this one up and down let's put this one to 100 let's give it a regular pulse and put this one to one for example okay so now this is going like this one that could be funny i just think that the overall shape here the cube could be further down here for example like this one so that feels better for me let's just see this once again okay so now we have like this basic shape here like this little parkour for our rigid bodies so now finally let's simulate some rigid bodies therefore grab a cloner put the sphere into the cloner let's move this one up here so maybe we want to put like a default material onto this one let's just create a shade here put it onto our sphere i want to go into it and want to for example put this one to a red value let's also make a blue material here so let's go over there let's create blue material this is perfectly fine now we want to move this one closer together let's just see the sphere has a radius of 10 so probably when we put in like a size margin here of 21 then you get like a safety border between these spheres when you put this one to 20 then they will like touch here and i think it will just be safer when you put it to a value like this one all right now this is fine let's just put this one to 10 and 10 okay you could also give it like 3 in the height or put this one to 15 and 15 this is also good let's put this one to 5 so now we have 15 times 5 times 15 i don't know what the sum of this will be but this is fine for now we don't want to overdo it here we want to have a real-time feedback and i also want to just angle this one here when you press F3, you can see this one from the side. So let's just more or less try to match this one, something like this one. That's perfect. And I think now that we don't have enough particles, so let's just put this one to 5. This is better. Now this one should be like 11, for example. Okay, more like this one. Let's put this one to 30. And yeah, so the rest is fine. You can definitely put more particles into it, but for now, let's just keep it like this one. And then we click on our bool object here right click on it go to simulation text put collider tag on it and hopefully now this will already simulate of course not because we forgot the main ingredients here of course here you need the new rigid body tag okay so let's simulate this one more time now you can see that this one is moving down i forgot to put a collider tag also on the cylinder so let's just quickly do this one okay hopefully this will still work and we also need more frames here so i put this one to 300 for example and now you can see that it is kind of working but something strange is going on okay so what's the problem here okay it looks like that was really stupid i put the collider tag on the cylinder here inside of the bool which is basically just there to subtract it from our main architecture here so definitely you don't want to have this tag on this one but on this one on the moving cylinder and now they can also fall into the center here and they can be pushed upwards and downwards and already you can see a beautiful 
to simulation here. Okay, so let's just make this a bit more interesting by duplicating this one. Let's put it to the other side. Let's rotate this one more time. Let's press F3 and let's just rotate this one more or less like this one, for example. Let's just do it. Okay, and these ones here, they could be blue and red. Okay, this is nice. So let's simulate this one more time. And you can see that the, the feedback here in the viewport is really strong. So I think this is a really satisfying viewport performance. You can simulate it, you can see it. And of course, you could also like optimize this a little bit. So these two spheres are rigid objects. This one can definitely be lower. So put this one to 18, for example, press NB to see it. So I think it could be even like 15 or 13 or something like this one. You can still, after all, then put it into a subdivision surface later to make it more smooth. But I think that this one is perfectly fine. Now the simulation should also be faster. Let's just double check this one. And once again, these ones, they fall down here. And of course, this parkour is pretty boring. Okay, so you can make the shape more interesting. You can work with different forces, with attraction, with rotation, with all of the good stuff and make this more interesting. And of course, you can definitely use more particles, more rigid bodies. So just crank up the numbers. You can also put different objects into your cloner to, for example, not only have spheres, but also cubes and other shapes, what you prefer. Yeah, I mean, there is so much you can play with. Let's just to have something that looks more interesting. Let's just put this one to 20 and also this one to 20. Let's just move it up here until it is levitating over it. Okay, let's do the same here. I just move this one up. All right, let's just do it like this one. And once again, you can simulate this. I will also do this. And therefore, I just make a little cash here. Okay, because now definitely when I want to play this one back, you can see that the simulation now is definitely slower. But still, I think this is still a good performance. Anyway, let's cash it and let's just see how this one will look like. All right, so I just let this one cash for a minute or so then I stopped it because it's just not designed here okay so it doesn't make so much sense the hole is not deep enough to catch all of the spheres for example they slide away to the side so for example if you want to prevent this one then you could make like an arc here that they naturally fall down into the middle you could also work with some forces for example like a subtle wind from here and there to force them into the middle you could work with an attractor here yeah I mean you can do so much cool stuff here and the thing is just it will take time to design this for example here I spent like probably one and a half hour here to just create a more interesting shape and just pull out these spheres and then I have these ones like these rotators here all of them are collider objects to just make it more interesting you can see they slide through it and they will do something interesting I also have like these pusher elements here from the side so for example here this one will get like a really strong push and then more of the rigid bodies will put towards the center of your simulation. Also these pushes here coming from the top and bottom they are just more powerful therefore you will get an effect like this one where you really have a strong push up with your particles. Okay so just think about different machines or what you can do here to make your simulation more powerful and strong and yeah so this is just a really easy beginning but now it's just up to you and your creativity to think about about different machines and solutions to play and move around your rigid body in a really interesting way okay so just create some amazing architecture for it and like a parkour like a playground for them and if you want to see me doing that then you can see the long version of this tutorial on my patreon I will upload it really soon okay so I hope that you now want to play with the rigid bodies in Simon 4d and just want to have a good time with them thank you so much for your time see you in the next tutorial bye everyone